So, you've made a render and you want to give it that extra boost in Photoshop. Clouds, trees, and some of that painterliness. It's a workflow I use so very often. And in this video, I want to go through some key points in the process, show you some tricks and tips, and work towards a piece like this. A quick note, this is a shortened version of a full two and a half hour voice tutorial over on Gumroad. More info at the end of the video. So before jumping into Photoshop, I think there are some key things to consider in your 3D scene first. Personally, I generally fall into a workflow where I work with a very simple 3D scene, like boxes just for perspective and maybe some lighting, or a workflow with a 3D scene heavy on assets, textures, lighting, everything. The first workflow is very similar to the method displayed in my Blender Beginners for Concept Art tutorial, so you can check that one out. This method is great if I'm working very fast and I'm still trying to define the idea or working more stylized where 2D might carry the piece more anyways. But in this video, we will dive more into the second workflow with having a heavy 3D scene. Firstly, having a plan of what you might do in 2D in regards to photo bashing and so on can really help guide your 3D. For this piece, I knew that I was going to do a lot of foliage in Photoshop anyways, so I felt there was no reason to place down foliage. Usually I think foliage takes too long to place, it's heavy in the scene, and it makes my Photoshop foliage process less flexible anyways. Because now you got all this foliage from the 3D in the way. It can be helpful to create some foliage just for reference, for lighting and color, which is also why I have some grass on the top of my clips here. Generally, I try to create as much as I can off the final image in 3D, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the more detail I put in, the easier it is for me to reuse the 3D scene later on for other projects. Secondly, it eases up the 2D process. It just makes the process faster. And when you're a little impatient like myself, achieving detailed results faster in 2D really helps out with motivation. And thirdly, and most importantly, it generally means I make better images. The earlier I can judge if the image works or not, the better my results become. I would rather scrap a bad idea early and try something else than having to fix an idea in 2D where it might be harder. As much as possible, I avoid getting back into the 3D scene to fix issues. My goal is to trust my decision-making process throughout. And I don't really get to get better at trusting myself if I always rely on fixing everything at the end. A final thing you should consider from your 3D scene are render passes. Render passes are really useful when you are working in 2D because they provide handy masks for your painting process. Render passes I use very often are the shadow pass and the mist pass, but many of them are incredibly useful. And if you set them up properly, you can export them every time you render automatically. Check them out. All right, onwards to Photoshop. I like separating my scene into layers early on. This generally helps me keep a tidy file, which can be really helpful, especially for larger pieces. So most of the time I use a very similar breakup where I simply think of the foreground, the midground, and the background. Then I create groups for each of those layers and extra groups for the areas in between those layers. Usually I can get very far with this simple five layer structure. The divisions don't always have to be groups, but as much as possible I try to stick to it as it keeps everything nice and flexible. The first big step I take is filling in all the detail I didn't get from the 3D render. In this case, the foliage and the clouds are the biggest part. With foliage, I usually paint out a mask and then fill that mask with lighting and photo textures. Masks in general are super useful as they are fast and flexible, which is right up my alley. Generally with photo textures, you wanna be mindful of the light direction and the overall color. I think it's worth spending the extra time finding an image that fits your scene in terms of lighting color and scale as closely as possible. It will just make it easier to work with. Generally, when making photos match into your scene, there's no right or wrong method. There's no blending mode you have to use. It's all about seeing. You have to evaluate for yourself what fits in. So if you simply adjust brightness and hue a tiny bit and it fits, then that's it. Your eye has to be the deciding factor of what is correct, not the tools or the techniques. The background is always a great place to attack early, as it usually represents the surrounding light and area, so it helps inform the rest of your piece. I usually try to use my initial sky from the render as a guide for my background, and then I mix it in with some photos of clouds. With clouds, I generally like to have a messy and explorative approach, 
where I try out a bunch of things and usually blend a lot of those ideas together. For this piece in particular, the clouds exist both in the background and the midground, so I'm painting both at the same time while I'm in that cloud painting mode. With the clouds and foliage in place, I can incorporate some depth using the mighty mist pass from our render. A super useful technique is to use it as a mask that you can then always add to later. The mist pass really sells the scale. And then it's always nice to blend out the top of the mist a tiny bit. It can help reveal the focal more clearly. Right, so now we've got a bunch of the foundation implemented and we're actually getting to the painting part of painting on your renders. A good approach is to build up your image with some additional textures. Get some photo textures and once again, get stuff that matches in perspective, lighting and color. Then play with the blending mode and see what works. Blend it in by erasing and adding where you see fit. Let your eye guide you. So when you got everything down, there are a bunch of neat tricks you can try out to bring the painterliness back. For this piece, I'm going to use two techniques. The first one being PhotoSketcher. PhotoSketcher is this program that repaints your image in a more painterly style. And then we can take that result and blend it in with our actual piece. I like using the shadow pass to mix the painterliness into the shadows. This really highlights the crispness of all the light. And you could do it all by hand, but when you're working fast, this technique is super useful. And I really like what it does to the clouds. It just sort of works. Now we're getting really close to the final result. So we're gonna give it some hand painted flares. And for that, we're gonna use the mixer brush. The mixer brush is a super versatile tool and it stretches things around in a very painterly way. I like to use it to defocus things, to bring attention to what matters or to work on detail that didn't really work from 3D. Now we can just make some final color adjustments and we're done. Obviously, we can spend a lot longer on many of the steps, but when working fast, I can always rely on this workflow and it creates some awesome results. If you're interested in an extended two and a half hour voiced version of this tutorial, you can get the painting over 3D renders tutorial over on Gumroad right now. In it, we go through all the render passes in 3D, how to use them in Photoshop, how to make everything more painterly and much more. If you like these videos, you can support us by subscribing, hitting the bell, checking out our Gumroad and joining our Discord server. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.